Hi, uh, this is Joey, and today we're going to be assembling the ebook feather wing. So the ebook wing is designed to be assembled by hand, so we're going to do it this way today. We have here the materials we need for soldering our soldering iron with a fine tip, our fine tipped tweezers for picking and placing our components, this uh, flux, which is going to be useful to make the solder go where we want it to go, and of course our fine solder with the yeah, fine lead free solder. Um, we also have here our multimeter, which we're going to use to test for continuity and uh, make sure we don't have any shorts when we have to assemble the board. And then for magnification, I'm using this USB microscope, but you can also use a plain old magnifier loop or even a magnifying glass, just as long as you can look up close. In order to stay organized, I've arranged all of the parts for this build in a grid that matches their order on the bill of materials. This way, I can populate each part and scratch it off on the bill of materials as I go. So let's get started. The first parts we're going to be dealing with are 1 kilo ohm resistors R1 and R2. You can see them right here, but sometimes it's hard to read the silk screen. That's why you should always consult the diagram, um, which will have enlarged versions of all of the part numbers for you to reference. So soldering these surface mount resistors is actually pretty straightforward. We're going to take our soldering iron and our thin solder and create a little blob of solder here on one side of the footprint. We're going to do this for both of the resistors. So now we have a little blob of elevated solder on each of those pads. Now we can remove our little resistors from their packaging. With the part in our tweezers here, we're going to move the part into place while we heat up that ball of solder that we made earlier. When that heats up, oops, let it go, and that's done. So now that's on there. So now all we have to do is go to the other side and apply solder to that joint, and we've placed resistor one. But let's go ahead and look at that in uh, microscope mode for a second so we can get a better sense. We put a little blob of solder down, grab our component, we place it on the pad while heating up that little blob of solder, and now that's on there. Then we just have to go to the other side, apply our solder to that side, and that's how you place a resistor. This is going to be how you solder the vast majority of the components on this board. So, moving on, I'm going to scratch off R1 and R2, and now we're going to place our 10 kilo ohm resistors. Here we've got R3 and R4, these are the pull-ups for the I2C bus. Then we have R6 and R7, which uh, bias the headphone output. R10 is the pull-up resistor for the Babel flash chip. This basically ensures that the flash chip remains unselected when you're not uh, trying to talk to it. R11, pull-up for the micro SD card. R12 is our pull-up for the SRAM chip. And R13 is our pull-up for the e-paper screen. Okay. Some people like to put the board in a uh, PCB holder or some vice or something. Personally, I just uh, like the freedom of being able to move it around as I go. And that rounds out our 10K resistors. So next, let's move on to our five. R5 is a 0.47 ohm resistor. It's a current sense resistor. So the e-paper display has a boost circuit that generates higher voltages for the display. Uh, where are you? There you are. This resistor is part of the feedback circuit that tells it uh, what's going on in the boost circuit. And it's... here. Finally, our 8 and our 9 are our last two resistors. These are 100 ohms. They're part of the headphone audio playback circuitry. So that is all of our resistors. Next we're going to do the capacitors. C1 lives over here in the extra ports block. It's just um, 
I don't know, in case you run any like high powered devices off of one of these ports, it's there to just kind of provide a buffer. And then C2 lives by the micro SD card and that's to buffer any um, sudden need for current from the micro SD card, especially when you plug one in. You wouldn't want it to cause a voltage drop that leads to instability. So let's uh, put these in place. So those are uh, so those were our <laughs> so those were our 10 microfarad capacitors. The next one is a big line. There's 12 of these. These are the one microfarad capacitors, and most of them live right over here. Um, some of them are here for the chips, as de decoupling capacitors, but mostly it's over here. And the reason is this. And the reason is this boost circuit generates a lot of different voltages to run the e-paper display, uh, and each of these capacitors is there to keep that voltage level stable. So you might have a plus 11 volt rail and a minus 11 volt rail. These capacitors are going to keep that voltage level stable for the screen. So let's do it. Next up, we have this um, really chunky 100 microfarad capacitor. This is related to the headphone output. It basically um, couples the analog output of the A0 channel to the headphone jack. This one might require a little bit more dwell time because it's just so chunky. It's absorbing a lot of heat. But there we go. There we go. That looks good. And finally, our um, 4.7 microfarad capacitor. This is also part of the boost circuit. And that rounds out all the capacitors. So next we have these little ferrite beads. So these things basically, um, well, they block high frequency noise. So we've got our three volt rail and our ground. And depending on what other chips are doing all over the board, they might like inject some noise into this. So in theory, over by the audio circuit, this is going to isolate um, a three volt and ground, like an analog version of those, basically like a kind of less noisy version of those uh, voltages. And that's going to be useful to bias the output. Um, so yeah. OK, so the next piece we're going to do is diodes. Um, Diodes are different from the resistors and capacitors that we've used so far, uh, in that diodes have a little line on the plastic that should match up with the line on the silk screen. The direction matters. So anyway, we'll, uh, we'll use the microscope maybe to kind of show, uh, show this one. So here we're looking at our Zener diode, and you'll notice this little gray line here on the left indicates the cathode. That line should match up with the line at the end of the arrow on the silk screen, which indicates the cathode on the, on the silk screen. So much like with our other components, we'll put down a little blob of solder right here, and then with our tweezers, maneuver it into place while heating up that little blob of solder. And once it's in place, we'll remove the heat, and it's in place. Now we just have to apply uh, some solder to the uh, pad on the other side, and that is how we place a diode. Next up we have Q1, our N-channel MOSFET. This one, you just have to make sure that the contacts match up with the pads. So, set three. As long as the three line up, you're good. Right. Okay. Now we get to move into ICs. So. These are the kind of classic looking chips that you might find in movies. Um, there are three of them. Uh, this one is our IO expander, and it's going to be the thing that enables all of our buttons. So let's uh, get started with that. So the trick with these ICs is that there's always going to be a dot on one corner of the chip. This dot right here indicates that this is pin one. And on the silk screen, you'll notice that there is a dot right here that matches up with that. So. When it comes time to place the IC, you just need to make sure that the dot on the chip matches up with the dot on the silk screen. In my opinion, the way to go about this is 
you take the pin one corner and you just put a little pad down, same as you have been with the um, passives. So there's a little bump of solder. And we grab our tweezers and we place the chip down with pin one matching in that position. Heat it up, place it down, and try to get all of the pins aligned as much as you can. Don't worry too much because once you let go, we can take a look. And it looks like this alignment's not bad. Like that looks okay. So now we're going to go to the opposite side and we're going to tack down this side. So now, all of the pins of our chip are aligned, hopefully. And that looks pretty good. This is something you can see visually with just your eyes, but it's kind of cool to see out of the microscope. Anyway, from here, we're just going to go ahead and uh, solder down all the other pins. The type of IC we're using here is called an SOIC, or small outline integrated circuit. And um, while it says the name small in its name, it's actually kind of the chunkiest surface mount component you can find these days. Um, next, we're going to use do our SRAM chip. So this chip is much the same as last time. It has a dot indicating pin one. There's a dot indicating pin one. So we will just um, put down a little blob of solder on pin one right here. Once again, pin one, pin one. And there it is. So you might end up with a solder bridge like this. That was me being a little bit intentionally sloppy, but let's just uh, put a little bit of flux on here. And reheat that joint. and the solder just kind of goes exactly where you want it to go. So that is the, um, oh, geez, no way, no. More flux right here. And voila, everything is where it's supposed to be. Next step is our flash chip. This is the chip that holds all of our language data. Next we've got our buttons. So uh, the buttons, uh, they're just these gullwing buttons. Make sure the button portion is facing outwards so you can press it. You're gonna put down a little blob of solder on one side. We're gonna place down our button. And they're in their place. There you go. Now we're going to do the other side. Voila. Okay, now the micro SD card. This part is actually tricky. Kind of fun though once you understand it. It's this part right here. So, you might be wondering how am I supposed to solder these things on this pad that's way underneath? Well, we're going to put a little pull of solder on one of these connectors here. And I'm just going to use my fingers because it's such a big, chunky part. Okay, so the slot is kind of on there now. If you look through here, we want to see all of these pins aligned to each of the pads underneath. Uh, so they're almost there right now. We're just going to kind of scoot the uh, slot into place. And then once it's in place, we can solder down the rest of the mounting points um, on the front. This will uh, kind of lock the slot into place. The way I like to do this is if you look at it from this angle, you can see where the pads are kind of right there. And you can feed your solder in from above. So it wasn't easy to get a shot of this, but here I've propped the board up slightly, and uh, you can see where I'm putting the solder in from the top and the soldering iron in at a right angle from the side. 
just make sure to double check with your magnifying device. And if you missed any pins like these two that were clearly missed, uh, you can always go back and resolder them and um, should be good to go. Okay, so that's our micro SD slot. That is one of the two tricky parts. Let's just do our jacks and we'll save the hard part for last. I think it's actually last on the bomb anyway. Headphone jack, pretty straightforward, kind of the same thing we've always been doing. Yep, put down a blob. Yeah, put down the jack. It has these little nice posts in it so that you know you're aligned. And uh, I just use my hands push down while you uh, heat the solder. It will fall into place. And there's that. And now you just have to tack down the rest of the uh, pads, solder down the rest of the pads. So after that, we have our I squared C connector. These, um, again, very similar. I just like to tack down one of the, uh, I guess, what are these, like mount points first. Align it with the uh, connections and the silk screen. Heat it up, let it go. And there it is. The other side into place. Micro SD, J1, I squared C, A1, A2. We got the feather headers now. To do this, we're going to do something very similar to what we did with the chips, in that we're going to put down a little blob of solder on one corner. And then just get our placement right and tack it into place. Okay, now, just to make sure, you can kind of lightly place your feather on top and make sure it feels like it's gonna go in fine. And if it does, we can tack down the other corners. So now, we can solder all of these little points. In between the headphone connector, you might need to put a little vertical so as not to burn any plastic. Now on the inside, just take a little bit of care to um, avoid getting any solder into the button holes, otherwise you'll have to suck it back out to mount your buttons later. Now finally we're at the last uh, challenging part, and that is the flex connector. So this bit, it's a really fine pitched 24-pin uh, connector. Um, so there's a trick to it, basically. Um, you're gonna use um, a fair amount of um, solder flux, and we're going to, um, well, I'll just kind of show you on the microscope. Okay, so with the flex connector, let's flip this guy up so you can see him. You've got this row of really fine pins, and they're going to really want to bridge with each other. So first, let's just um, do what we've always been doing. Put down a little blob of solder and get our placement right. That looks pretty good. So we're going to tack down the other side. And of course, if you didn't get the placement right the first time, you can always like adjust and move it around before you put it in place permanently. But yeah, that looks pretty good. So, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to apply a little bit of our solder flux. Um, so, this is going to help our pins to not bridge, although it's probably going to happen. So, let's just put a little bit over all of our pins. So, now you're going to solder down the pins. Um, just kind of what you were doing before. Uh, put some solder down in the soldering iron to contact the joint. Um, it can help just to drag across the pins. You're going to see some bridging, but that's okay because we can address that in just a moment. So yeah, as you do this drag soldering, you're going to see some bridged pins. It's really nothing to worry about. So what I like to do when I see a bridge, solder bridge like this, I like to apply a little bit of extra flux, 
and then chip my soldering iron and kind of drag away from the bridge spot. You want to clean your soldering iron fairly often in between to make sure there's no extra solder, but uh, when you kind of tease that uh, solder bridge away, it'll separate the pins. Personally, I found this method works well even for large solder bridges like this. Um, this is at eight times speed. Um, but you can also use your solder wick or a solder sucker if you have one. Uh, this is just the method I've found works for me. But uh, if you have a method that works for you in terms of cleaning up these solder bridges, you should absolutely go for it. There we go. That looks good. Okay, so we've now soldered our, <laughs> our tricky flex connector into place. So at this point, we're going to break out our handy multimeter. And we're going to use this to just check for continuity and make sure there's no shorts between our power and our ground nets. That's because you don't want to plug your feather in and then have a short, like, cause bad things to happen. So we're going to turn our multimeter into continuity mode. And you'll know it's in this mode because when you touch the little things together, it'll make a beeping sound. So all we have to do for now is um, find our ground and our three volt and touch them to each other. And as long as you don't hear a beep, you don't have any shorts. So that's fine. And um, now we can plug in our feather. Feather goes in with the pins aligned. So now we're going to plug in our feather, open up Arduino, and go to File, Examples, Open Book Screen Test. And we're going to make sure that the board we have selected is Tools, Board, Adafruit Sandy Boards, Adafruit Feather M4 Express, because that's the board we have right here. So we're going to run the sketch. And of course, nothing's going to happen because we don't have a screen on here yet. So let's unplug and attach our screen. So for this part, it's a little tricky, but I find that it helps if you take the flex cable and kind of crease it a little bit. Not too much, just a little bit, so it's got a little bend to it. And then you'll feed it through the hole up here. Then you can use your fingers to just gently work it into the slot. That's good. Let's close the little latch. And we'll plug our feather in again. And now you've built your ebook feather wing, mostly. So at this point, you're going to unplug, we're going to remove the screen to be replaced later. and we're going to solder in all of our through-hole components. So let's start with the enable switch. Oops. The enable switch comes in from the bottom, overlapping the little box, and we're going to use our soldering iron and our fine solder to just uh, put it in place. Now we're going to do our through-hole buttons, and I find it's easy just to put all of them on at once and solder them in one fell swoop. And then we'll replace the screen. We took the screen out because when soldering those through hole components, it could throw up some flux and you didn't want that to get on the screen and damage it or anything. But again, pretty simple. Just put the flux cable through, flip the latch, and plug your feather back in. So at this point, you might want to um, attach the screen to the PCB using some tape. Uh, Double-sided tape works well if you want to permanently attach it, like it's just uh, the entire gadget. I've used just some blue painter's tape here because I might want to take the screen off and use it for something else. Um, but at this point, you're done. Um, if you want to check out um, how to build an enclosure, uh, there's some information on the uh, ebook feathering wiki or the open book wiki um, on how to 3D print one or use a laser cut acrylic or wood uh, for an enclosure. But yeah, that's uh, how you assemble the ebook feather ring.